Morning viewer, it's a bit cold and wet this morning, summer over already, the drought finished, anyway, normally when I start a vlog like this, I'm uh, doing something nothing to do with gas, I'm normally going to a football match, could be going on holiday, could be going trying to see a Tia Sophia's concert, but uh, today, it's got something to do with gas. We're actually going to the northeast to see the hydrogen homes and to see how far we're getting with hydrogen. So, a uh, bit of a trek, but it's even more of a trek because I've got to go and see my good friend, Matt Dickin, at uh, a college in Liverpool first. Well, it's actually on the Wirral, so. Uh, it's part of Liverpool, isn't it? And uh, I get to go through the Mersey Tunnel, which I don't think I've ever done before. I might have done. Anyway, as usual, little Miss Rosie needs to go out. And uh, hopefully the weather's going to improve for the big epic um, drive. Because it's about an hour to Liverpool. And then I've got a few hours in Liverpool with the meetings. And then I've got about a three and a half hour drive over to the northeast. So, as usual, let's get on with it. Now that's my meetings over and done with at Wirral Met College. Uh, they went on a little bit longer than I expected. So I've just had a look at my sat-nav and my sat-nav says I'm going to get the hydrogen homes for 5.50 and my appointments at 6 o'clock. So hopefully I don't hear any traffic. Now I've safely arrived at the hydrogen homes. I actually made up 5 minutes. So I'm early. So let's have a look and see what these hydrogen homes have to offer. Now this pair of semi-detached homes are the UK's first homes with appliances fuelled entirely by hydrogen. The homes were officially opened by the then Energy Minister Anne-Marie Travelham. The homes were initially opened on Thursday the 15th of July 2021. The homes provide the public with a glimpse into the potential emission-free homes of our future. These two semi-detached homes have been built in partnership between gas distributors Caden and Northern Gas Networks and the Government's Department of Business Energy and Industrial Strategies to provide the public with this opportunity to experience a net zero emissions gas fueled home of the future. Now in the living rooms of these semi-detached homes, we have a balanced fluid, hydrogen powered fires. In one kitchen, we have a Worcester Bosch fully 100% hydrogen combination boiler. And in the other kitchen, we have a 100% hydrogen Baxi combination boiler. Also in the kitchen, we have a hob in one of the houses and in the other, there is a freestanding cooker. As well as having different boilers and uh, cooking equipment in these homes, they are also supplied with two different makes and models of gas meter. And the appliances will be rotated so that different manufacturers will be able to showcase their innovations and seek feedback from the hydrogen homes. Hydrogen boilers have already been developed by most of the leading manufacturers such as Baxi, 
uh, Worcester and Valent. As well as having the two hydrogen homes, this site is also the first site in the UK to produce blended gas. So Wynn Leighton here in Gateshead has become the first community to receive a hydrogen blend via the public natural gas network. 668 homes, a school and some small businesses received the blend of 20% hydrogen and 80% natural gas. The project started in August last year and finished just two weeks ago. The first project to get blended gas saw 100 homes and around 300 commercial buildings on a closed network at Kiel University successfully use the hydrogen blend for a period of 18 months which ended last spring. Now let's have a look at the flame picture on this hydrogen hob and compare it with a natural gas one. Now the first thing you'll notice is when we light it, it makes this popping noise. You can see all four of them did that and also you can see the flame is this orange colour so it's got orange flecks on it which is uh, normally not a good sign for a gas engineer and this hob also has these uh, green lights to show that it's lit because when you turn it down to low you cannot see the flame so this guy's just going to put some magic powder on the flame so you can see it flickering to see that it is still working so that's one of the differences between natural gas and hydrogen is the flame color now these hydrogen homes have been designed to have a three year lifespan but potentially they could last up to 10 years they were not intended to be inhabited but to showcase the use of hydrogen fueled appliances in the real world domestic setting. The innovative hydrogen appliances are being produced with the support of the government High for Heat innovation program. Hydrogen could play a vital role in achieving the government's committing to eliminating the UK's contribution to climate change by 2050, with the industry creating up to 8,000 jobs across Britain's industrial heartlands and beyond by 2030, potentially unlocking up to 10,000 jobs by 2050. So that looks like the end of the trials from 2% uh, uh, hydrogen 20% uh, hydrogen into the lines but this facility isn't just going to stop there it's doing other stuff so I don't know if you've noticed in the background you'll see there's some building going on so they're actually going to build a village there with all the different types of houses what you'll find in the UK there's going to be terraced houses in there detached we've already got the semi detached uh, they're going to put some masonette flat type things in there as well and they're going to put different um, renewable energies in there so i think they're going to put uh, air source ground source and they're going to put obviously hydrogen stuff in there and they're going to compare it all so they've got something to give to the government on the difference between renewable energies using electric to renewable energies using hydrogen so uh, that's a good process next and hopefully that's going to be finished by the end of 2022 beginning of 2023 so hopefully i can get down there again when it's done and do another video now is this all going to become reality or is it just going to be a pipe dream now there's about uh, 7,000 kilometers of uh, gas pipe in the uk a uh, massive amount of gas pipes which need to be monitored and replaced or checked uh, when needed. So that's a lot to get rid of, which has been paid for already to not go to 100% hydrogen. Also, while I was there, one of the big myths about hydrogen was uh, expelled when they said you can put 100% hydrogen through a steel pipe as long as there's no moisture in it because it's the water what becomes the electrolyte to create the corrosion. So um, they're saying they're doing trials with steel pipe and they've seen no difference between hydrogen than they have with uh, uh, um, natural gas in it. But why do we need to worry about hydrogen being in our pipes anyway? Because back in the, before the 1960s when we had coal gas or towns gas, that was up to 60% hydrogen in there anyway. 
So our main pipelines, which have been in there for a long time now, a lot of them, would have carried hydrogen anyway. Okay, so it shouldn't take much to get the infrastructure being able to take this hydrogen gas. So the other big things are 85% of UK homes use gas to heat their homes and the hot water. Up to 50% of our electricity is made using natural gas. So this kind of blending makes sense to me at the beginning. So I've heard figures being banded around that putting 20% uh, hydrogen into the gas would be like reducing from say 2 million up to 6 million cars off the road. I would say probably lower the 2 million figures, probably the more realistic one, but it's still a massive help to get rid of our CO2 and get us down to our carbon neutral figures by 2050. But there's still a hell of a lot to do. Boilers are hydrogen blend ready now. So the boiler you've probably got in your house is almost certainly hydrogen blend ready, but it's not hydrogen ready. By 2025, they're hoping that boiler manufacturers will start producing boilers that are 100% hydrogen ready. Um, but the government's not making any kind of um, decision on hydrogen until 2026, they say. So the other big issue is making the hydrogen, the green hydrogen, and getting the hydrogen. That's the biggest problem I see with all this, is can we make enough hydrogen? Now, people are saying that because of wind turbines during the night when the electricity is not needed, because we can't store electricity when we make it. We haven't got massive batteries, so we can put the electricity in the batteries and then go into the grid. So they could actually say they could use the unused electricity at night time by wind turbines and create hydrogen and then use that hydrogen then to make electricity when it's needed more in the winter or put that hydrogen into the blended natural gas. That for me is the future, the, the way forward. I might be completely barking up the wrong tree and if you don't agree with me, put down the comments down there rather than us go into 100% hydrogen now because I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna happen because I don't think we can make enough hydrogen to go 100% hydrogen in the 2030s, 2040s, what they're saying, unless something drastically happens. So for me, the blending, if it does reduce our CO2 figures, is a must because I think if you've watched my videos, you know my feelings on air source heat pumps. Yes, they're amazing. Ground source is a lot better but we haven't got the space for ground, uh, for ground source. Air source is fantastic for new builds if your house has been made for an air source heat pump. But if you've got a gas boiler now, it's gonna cost massive amount of money to change it over from a gas boiler to a, an air source heat pump. And with the price of gas and electric going up like it is at the moment and what they're saying it's gonna do, are people gonna have the 15, 20 grand to change over from a gas boiler to an air source heat pump because it's not just the heat pump it's the insulation what goes with it and the infrastructure of your pipe work inside the house taking your bathroom back out again and put it to put a cylinder in which we did massively in the 80s and 90s when we were taking cylinders out of houses and putting combi boilers in and making bathrooms bigger and better so we're going to take all that back out again that comes with a cost is this all just a pipe dream well, at the moment, yeah, <laughs> it's a pipe dream with a lot going on behind the scenes. The money what Caden and all the gas companies are putting in um, to get the infrastructure right and to do all these tests for hydrogen is massive and well worth it, I think, to get rid of our CO2 levels. Because at the end of the day, it's all about reducing our carbon footprint, not ripping off the general public which it seems to be at the moment, or well, looking like that with the prices of gas and electricity. Anyway, hope you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.